Hi, this is Dave Mustaine from Megadeth, and you are watching Loudwire. Hey everyone, Gurhamid here from Loudwire, and it's Wikipedia Fact or Fiction time with an amazing guest, Mr. Dave Mustaine from Megadeth. Thank you so much for your time today. You're greatly, welcome. greatly appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, so went through your Wikipedia page, Megadeth's Wikipedia pages. We're gonna pull out some stuff, and you can tell us whether it's whether if it's right or wrong, because we believe you are a credible source about yourself. I hope so. <laughs> yes. All right. They do get this stuff wrong sometimes, so we'll start it out just with your name, David Scott Mustaine. That's right. True. Born in La Mesa, California. Yeah. Okay. They do get that wrong, so yeah, one point for them. Uh, it said that you were brought up as a Jehovah's Witness. Uh, not brought up okay. per se. Okay. Little fiction. At, I was baptized as a Lutheran at four. At seven, I became a witness until I was fifteen, and then my mom moved out, and I. That's when I got into the occult. <laughs> right. So th those eight years that were formidable years, and they really psychologically set me up for all the animosity I have towards organized religion. So you found those to be quite strict years? Well, I, I, it's, you know, a cult is a cult is a cult, <laughs> you know. So when you have to, you're at school and the national anthem is uh, played, or you do the Pledge of Allegiance and <clears throat> you're the one kid standing there with your hands at your side going like, okay, just punch me at recess, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that kind of crap. You know, uh, you can't have any friends and you can't celebrate birthdays or, you know, holidays and stuff like that. And it's like, man, religion is supposed to be something that makes you better, not makes you want to be a serial killer, you know? One would hope. Uh, it said that your first band was called Panic, mm -hmm. but the band ended tragically after drummer Mike Leftwich and the band's sound manager uh, were killed in a car crash after the band's second show. Mm -hmm. That's true. What yeah. kind of a, a drummer was Mike Leftwich? He was pretty good. Yeah. What happened was we played a, a party in, in Dana Point at my, co my, uh, my cousin's pad, and on the way home, uh, you know, we told him, don't drive. Just, just oh, really? don't, don't drive. Because, you know, we'd been playing, everybody was partying, it's a kegger party, everybody's having fun. And so the guy, Joe, decides to get behind the wheel. And I didn't know, because I had gone to sleep and found out the next day that, <coughs> excuse me guys, uh, Joe had driven home, Mike had gotten in the back seat of the car and fallen asleep. And right across the street from where I used to surf every day, there's a Jack in the Box and a, a 76 gas station on the south side of Huntington Beach Pier. There's a control box for the lights, the signals. Oh, and right. Joe fell asleep, hit the thing, broke his neck, and uh, died on impact, and Mike burnt up in the car. Oh, my God. So uh, that was really horrible. Oh, man. H how do you get past something like that? You pray about it. You know, mm. you, you try and be supportive to the family. And, um, you know, I can never uh, quantify what their loss is, so whenever I get a chance to, I pay homage to... Mike and Joe and, and another band member we had named Tom uh, Tom Quick who had uh, lost his life too uh, right after the band started to fall apart he had had a tragic car accident and I, I in fact I had just recently heard from one of his family members his he had a big brother that's in the CIA so dude wow. dude was a good dude you know came yeah. from a good family he was a good guitar player and it was very eye opening in the beginning of my career I thought you know am I supposed to be doing this with all this tragedy that's going on here yeah. Um, it said that you landed your gig as Metallica's lead guitarist without even having to audition. That's true? Yeah. Were they familiar with your guitar playing already and... No, not at all? Mm -mm. Were there actual auditions or was it just you were there and they're like, just come play with us, man? Well, what happened was we'd gone to uh, Ron McGovern's uh, parents' house where he was living and she, they had a uh, uh, little area, I don't even know what you call it because I'm not a realtor, but you know, when you have a bunch of condos next to each other, there was like a driveway that went back and there were several houses that were duplexes that were yeah. lined up down the street. And so Ron had his own uh, duplex with a, a garage that we had 
uh, for rehearsing it. And I went in there and I set my stuff up and I was just tuning my guitar. And, and um, I came in and I said, okay, so, you know, are we gonna do the audition? They said, no, you got the, the job. And, and I was just warming up. So I think what they heard pretty much impressed them to the point where they didn't need to do that. Yeah. And James wasn't playing guitar at the time too. I don't right. know if you've seen those pictures of him where he's got his mic stand and I'm the only one with the guitar. Mm -hmm. So it was a pretty, pretty big load to take being the only guitar player in a band. Yeah. Uh, it said that you once poured a full can of beer down Ron, Ron McGovney's bass, which gave him an electric shock that blew him across the room. That's a lie. That sounded false to me. Yeah. I don't what think happened the was um, Ron, who I'm friends with now, had um, had a, someone who was an acquaintance of mine jump through his window, and take a bunch of his records. Oh. Geez. And um, Ron was right to be mad, but he blamed me for it, and and I was so offended that I I poured a beer into his guitar. Yeah. No, I didn't do it to hurt him, and anybody with half a brain cell knows that if you pour liquid into a, an object that you know is not plugged in at the moment, and it wasn't, because why would Ron be wearing a, a, a guitar and let me pour a beer into it? As soon as you do that, it stops working. Yeah, exactly. So. It's a, yeah. Not just gonna poof and yeah. fly across the room. And, and plus, don't you think you would have heard that story before from me? This was the first time I heard the yeah. story. Yeah, so I mean, I would I have said something about it. It would have been a great story yeah. if it was possible. Plus, the stuff that I've done in my past, if there was something I did that was not cool, unless the guy deserved it, you know, I've made amends to people for it. Yeah. I mean, some, some people are assholes and they just need what they have coming to them. But, you know, if I've done something in my past where you know, it's done something to somebody who didn't deserve it. You know, I've cleaned up the wreckage of my past. Pretty sure. good, pretty good. I'm sure there's still some people out there that, you know, I've done stuff to that I don't remember yet. But, you know, we've got a really great way of our past crossing and us being able to make stuff up. Like I saw something from Ricky Rackman recently and and uh, he had said something and, and I, I was kind of bummed because, you know, he had, had said that, um, that he thought that I really didn't like him, and 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 I mm. like him. The whole thing we did with MTV was a gag, you know. Okay. Because um, whenever we were off camera, what people never saw was you know Ricky and I laughing and and yucking it up and stuff like that. So so that's the guy that I remember. I don't remember the guy that, um, you know, I would pick on because that was it was like a you know a gag for TV. Sure. So, yeah. That's, and that's a cool thing, too, to be able to, you know, clear that up and let them know that, hey, you know what, I really didn't dislike you. It was just a, 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 a thing. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually excited, not excited because I think that's bullshit, but I'm happy for his success because, you know, all the guys sure. that we were part of this little clique in Hollywood, you know, and to see any, any one of us, you know, Slash and David used to hang out together and Ricky and all those guys, there was a circle of us, although some of us were a little... Uh, different. We all were part of that circle. So it, was, it made me happy to see that he was still doing stuff. Uh, it said that your musical partnership with David Ellison began after he asked you to buy him cigarettes. Uh, you refused, but a few minutes later he knocked on your door again and asked you to buy him beer. You said, now you're talking, and you guys spent the night talking music together. We spent the night drinking. Yeah, okay, not, not talking yeah. music so much? Uh, no, I was listening to him talk music and I just wanted to drink his beer. Uh, okay, so, so he paid. He did, he did. He, he did. Uh, you know, I, I had just come back from being uh, in Metallica and started over again, so I was living on my own up there and he'd come out and he still had his dad's credit card from Minnesota and his dad was very, very supportive, really great man, he, he's passed away. Um, so, you know, Dave, it was easy for him to go and get a case of beer. Sure. You know, you just had to kind of, you know, not, not do it too often or guilt would come in and, you know, his dad would call up and, you know, say, hey, you know, you guys need to tone it down a little bit. So, mm -hmm. so there was always that parachute there, you know, for, for him, which was great. And, you know, I got to tell you, honestly, sometimes I wonder why he stuck it out because, you know, he had a place that he could go to. I didn't, you know, so he could always oh, yeah. have gone home. He could always, you know, have, have said, hey, Dad, you know what, I'm going to quit. I'm going to, you know, go do something different. I'm going to get in another band, you know, no more, you know, us <laughs> living in a car in Los Angeles. 
but he stayed, and that's a big testimony to Dave and who he is as a person and his his integrity and his belief in this band.